Magandang araw po sa kanilang lahat. Uh, ito po ang ating programa dito sa TVUP na Kultura, Sining at Iba Pa. Ako po si Butch Dalisay, ang inyong host, at kasama kong co-host dito ay si uh, Neil uh, Garcia. Magandang araw. Uh, ngayong araw po, uh, this morning, our, uh, or this day, our episode will be on Philippine art and uh, specifically uh, Philippine visual arts and, and sculpture. Uh, ang sining po na pwede nating uh, tingnan, uh, minsan pwedeng hawakan, paglaruan, pwedeng bilhin, pwedeng bilhin, <laughs> pahiramin. Uh, and of course, there are many, many kinds of art, many, many kinds of artists. So today we put together a, a panel of, uh, of artists and people uh, engaged in the arts. Uh, to talk about various aspects of what it takes to be an artist to begin with, and ano uh, na ba nangyayari sa eksena ngayon ng sining sa Pilipinas. At uh, pakikilala namin sa inyo ang ating mga panauhin ngayong araw. Uh, mula sa aking kaliwa, unang-una si Luis Yee Jr., pero mas kilala sa pangalang Jun Yee. Si Jun Yee, isa sa mga primerong uh, exponent ng tinatawag na site-specific art or, uh, at, uh, installation art dito sa Pilipinas. Uh, pintor siya, sculptor siya. Ang daming klaseng art na ginagawa ni, ni Junie. At, at kasama siya natin ngayon mula sa kanyang lungga sa Los, Los Baños. <laughs> Tumusta, Junie? Ma Mamiya, may tatanong ako tungkol sa background mo bilang uh, kung paano ka na, Kasi alam ko, very interesting yung pagpasok mo sa, sa arts eh. At sa kanyang kanan naman ay si ang, ang pinakabata sa ating uh, grupo ng araw, si Kiri Dalena. Ano, siguro alam niyo yung pangalang, matunog yung pangalang Dalena. Pero si Kiri ay isang very accomplished visual artist, uh, uh, sculptor, film, uh, filmmaker, uh, at ang kanyang trabaho ay may napakalakas na aspekto ng, ng, na, na mga, ng so, mga social at political uh, concerns. Ano? In fact, kagagaling lang ni, ni Kiri uh, mula, sa, mula sa Marawi. At baka pwede siyang magkwento mamaya tungkol sa kanyang mga nakita doon. Sa aking kanan naman ay si uh, pinakakanan ay si kaibigang Meps uh, Endaya, Imelda Kehipe Endaya. Siguro kilala niyo sa bilang isa sa ating mga pangunahing pintor at uh, printmaker at, at installation artist din. Ano? Si Meps ang isa sa mga nanguna sa grupong kasibulan. At uh, again, uh, Meps could probably tell us a little more about, uh, about kasibulan and other artists' groups in this, in this country. Uh, to my immediate right, isang uh, kaibigan ko mula nung uh, kasama pa kami dito sa Kuleyo sa UP, Alam ko, medyo naga-artist din si, si Jack no Nakikita kita nung nag-drawing, pero ang talaga, uh, nagsisketching, pero ang talagang trabaho ni Jack ngayon, among many other jobs he's done, alam ko, naging administrador ka pa ng Philippine Fiber, Fiber Authority, you know? Uh, uh, Jack is a businessman, he's an entrepreneur, uh, and he uh, is the managing uh, director of the Gallery Joaquin Group. Bakit kaya naging Joaquin? Kasi Jack na. No? Uh, and uh, he also publishes the country's leading art magazine, Art Plus. So ito ang ating uh, very, very uh, high-powered and interesting group of yes. artists. Yeah. Uh, very honored today. to have them uh, with us today. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the first question we, we can ask them is uh, their journey into art. Mm. If they can describe very briefly their journey into art. Paano ba kayo pumasok dito sa larangan ito. Lalo na ito, lalo na si Junyi, kasi alam ko, Junyi, eh, nagtrabaho ko pa nung bilang uh, houseboy ba yun? Sabi mo. Oo, oh, At <laughs> embalsamado. Oh my God. <laughs> Mortician. Actually, I was born an artist. Oh. Ever since Malay. Yes. Saan sa ngayon? Sa Agusan? Uh, sa Badbaran. Uh, uh, and that's the reason why umalis ako, o lumayas ako sa amin. Kasi oh. ayaw ng papa ko na yung check na gusto niya mag katulad niya. Oh. Business, no? Business. So, ang ginawa ko, lumayas ako para masolve yung problema. So, I ended up in uh, 
Cebuas, where I studied high school in Cebuas, oh. Carlos University. Oh. So during my high school there, mayroon silang elected na fine arts yung kinuha ko. So I push on as college, mayroon silang fine arts na i-offer. Oh. Mm. Pagdating ko, wala pala doon. So dahan-dahan na ubos yung pera ko, so wala na akong pagbayad sa dormitoryo, maghanap ako ng trabaho. So that's the reason yung sinabi mo na naging iba sa mag-ura ko. So uh, kita ko ng janitor sa isang malaking uh, funerary ko. Oh. So, <laughs> so nag-apply ako, after one month, nalaman ng may-ari ng Inchik, Inchik din, oh. na graduate ako ng high school. Oh. So ginawa niya ako ng clerk. So ako oh. yung nagpapalo ako ng mga paper, state certificate, etc. Then after another month, na-discover niya na magaling ako po sa art. Oh. So sabi niya, tinawag niya ako. So oh. sa office, uh, sabi niya, malita ko mahose ka sa art. Sabi ko, konti. Sige, sabi niya, bumili ka ng mga gamit mo. So, mm. Yung mga pinakamahal na gamit. So sabi ko, ang lumit ka. So, siguro ang magiging chi ko. So happy sa ko. May magpaparal sa akin. Tapos, ang gamit niya pirang pinigay. Sabi niya, bumili ka ng Max Factor. Mas mahal yun. Sabi ko, that Max Factor. Makeup ka na. Di pa rin yung gamit up sa patay. So, I really, hindi ko alam parang gawin. I, I grew up in a very secure Lumaki ako ng oh. So, being there at that time, I miss my parents every day at the same time. The same for the same time. So, iyak ako ng iyak sa gabi kasi wala na abandon. Ayaw ko namang umuwi. Oh. Kasi kung umuwi ako, hindi ako maging artist. Eh, gusto ko talaga ng maging artist. So, yun. Naging makeup artist ako. And uh, I'm proud to say I'm the best. Sige, Judy, mamaya. Tatanungin mo kung paano na pepohan yun yung Ito naman si... Ito so, naman. The, uh, journey into art through uh, embalming, no? <laughs> through mort <laughs> the mortician's work. Oh, that's very interesting. Ito, ito naman si Kiri. Alam, alam ko, alam ko, Kiri, uh, nag-aaral ka sa UPLB, you know? Nang oh. uh, human ecology ba? So how do you get from there to like, so, filmmaking and sculpture? Uh, Eddie, ang, there are no hard and fast rules to get into art. And in my case, in context, uh, I came from a family of yeah, artists. artists. So okay. both my dad and my mom were artists. And Sige, we... Sige, natin yung pangalan nila. Si, <laughs> ma, my mother is Julie Liuch, isang skultor. Yes. Tapos yung tatay ko ay isang pintor, si Danilo Dalena. Uh -huh. At lumaki kami na... Uh, surrounded by Surrounded by, mm -hmm. by their works. At sa kaso ko, uh, bata pa lang ako, natuto na rin ako mag-sculpture. Uh -oh. Mas dahil yung nanay ko yung walang studio, kaya sa dining table kami <laughs> siya nagtatrabaho. O, yung tatay ko nag nagpipinta, pero may studio siya. Pero hindi namin nakikita kung paano uh -oh. siya magpinta. Pero lumaki rin kami na um, nakita namin yung struggle ng mga artists. Uh -oh. Hindi sila... Nahirapan sila sa kita, kaya may trabaho sila bilang teachers, oh. at saka nagtatrabaho din sila sa magazine. Um, tapos, siguro yung sa akin, ang mahalaga doon, in-encourage rin kami ng mga magulang namin to pursue something outside of the arts. So, oh, nandun okay. yung malaya ang sabi nila, malaya kayo to, do, to not to become artists, at saka oh. alam nyo na yung konteksto na ang hirap maging artist. This was in the 80s and oh, yeah. um, in, struggle talaga. Oh, struggle right. then. Tapos yung tatay ko was nawalan din ng trabaho dahil sa martial law. Um, tapos, kaya nandun din yung nakita ko na ang hirap na maging maging artist. At uh, doon, nakita ko rin na mahirap, magulo, uh, very intense din minsan yung uh, magkarelasyon artist and I wanted to pursue something sa environment and that's why I studied human so, ecology. Mo na yes, but I guess the universe has a way of mm. bringing you right. uh, so back. Yeah. So it was through film. Um, I studied in UP Los Baños tapos uh, at that time grabe rin yung ferment ng student movement. I mm. became involved in uh, the University Student Council, I became an officer and chaired Gabriela Youth. Yes. But then I saw that very few people were shooting or documenting. Yes. Uh, also around us, there were factories, may mga 
like a strike and that's when I started to borrow my sister's camera because she pursued film. Oh, your sister's Sarah? Sarah. Yes, he's a, oh. my sister is a oh. filmmaker. And I guess that's how it started. So I started with cinema or film. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have Sari here in a future yeah. episode. Pero nabanggit na UP, UPLB. Actually, puro UP tayo na dito. Because si, si MEPS uh, was also UP Fine Arts. MEPS. Oo. Oh, oh. Advertising nga ako noon kasi uh, actually paano ako napasok sa sa art uh, maliit pa ako alam ko lang gusto ko magdrawing ng magdrawing pero hindi ko alam yung art da, talagang art basta nagdo-drawing lang ako kasi ang napaligiran sa akin uh, folk art ng paite yun ang galing ang magulang ko and uh, ang mga kamag-anak namin nag stock ng wood carving sa bahay na ibebenta tsaka mga taka Tapos nakikita ko, magagaling talaga mag-drawing ang mga tagapayte at saka mag -curve. Tapos ang, ang exposure ko sa art naman, na hindi ko naman alam yung Philippine art, no? bata pa ako kasi wala ka namang makikita ang Philippine art doon. So ang nakikita kong art yung binabasa ng nanay ko, tatay ko, sa buhay ni uh, Agony and Ecstasy or Life ni Van Gogh, may mga pictures doon. Kaya masyadong disjunk, ano? folk art yung alam ko or pop culture at mga comics nakikita ko. Pero pagdating ko sa uh, high school, doon ko lang una nakita yung mga sining, pero world art pa rin. Yung identity pa lang yung sinasabi ko, bakit hindi ko naman hindi ko naman mundo yung David or Michelangelo or yung buhay ni Van Gogh, although mabuti namang alam natin yun. Kaya yung identity ng Pilipino, parang nasa akin lagi noon, mas, kina, na, mas naumpisahan ko nga gumawa ng abstract art eh. Kasi yung process, Nang doing art, eh, parang abstract talaga, di ba? Yung you draw from your subconscious, at saka, it's just passion, sheer passion, you like to do it. Uh, pero yun, parang naging ano sa kabataan ko, kasi siguro produkto ko nung panahon natin, mas matanda naman siguro kasi ng konti. <laughs> konti. Oo, yung uh, first quarter storm na panahon, talaga naghahanap ka ng relevance ng iyong ginagawa at palaging dapat... Uh, nagsisilbi sa iyong kapwa. Parang nadala ko yun hanggang ngayon. Oo, pero as artist, palaging parang ibon lang ako na gustong kumanta. Kung anong gusto kong kumanta. At, at what point did you kind of dip your stride or, or find your niche? Uh, kasi hindi lang po uh, 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 ang elements ng art mo, kundi yung mga historical na, uh -oh. na, 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 na elemento. Uh -oh. Kailan, kailan, uh, Kaya mo nakita na ito talaga yung trabahong uh, MEPS kahitay na... Maybe Butch, we can ask that of all the artists oh, yes, here, yes, no? Yes. You, uh, have you, I, have you discovered your subject? Oh. And when and how did you discover it? Sige, pero bago tayo kung tanong, ako ang kaya kaya. But we'll go back to that, yeah, right? Yeah, we'll, no. we'll go back to that. Salamat po. Ito si Jack kasi, uh, again, I'd like to ask you, Jack, I've known you for a long, long time. How is it that after all these businesses and enterprises you got into, you settled into art itself as a business. Ang may kasalanan dyan, Butch, si, ano eh, si Virgie Moreno. Kasi, um, well, in high school, um, interested na ako sa literature. Uh, sa Lasal, oh, at saka we were part of the literary magazine, ganun. But uh, nung pumasok ako sa UP, nagkaroon ako ng teacher sa humanities. Ang pangalan niya, I will never forget her, she's still active up to this day, by Virgie Moreno. Siya yung nagturo sa amin ng humanities. Kasi, well, sa Lasal, medyo exposed ka na ng konti dun sa European art or American Western art. Ano? But si Virgie, para really encouraged us to see the excitement and beauty of uh, ano, Philippine art and culture. No? So, in-exposed siya kami noon, 19... But that was 1970, pero kinikwento na niya kami tungkol kay Cesar Legaspi, H.R. Ocampo, uh, Manansala, Ang Kyukok, together with juxtaposing this with, ano, with uh, yung mga um, um, Western art and culture. So that, that really, you know, kind of got my excitement going. No? And so yung na-mention mo kanina na na-involved tayo sa Fiber Authority, uh, totoo yun. And, and in, ano, nag, ano siya eh, nagtugma. Kasi um, after high school, I mean after UP, na, uh, business economics. 
after business economics, na ano na involved ako sa investment banking. But then after that, um, na invite kami ni Secretary Bong Tangko ng Department of Agriculture to join his management team. So nung ano, nung sumama kami dun sa kanya, mga some uh, uh, people from the business community and uh, from yung mga universities na sa, sa Maynila, um, inassign niya ako sa export crops. <laughs> Tapos, uh, well, swerte naman, binigay nila sa amin uh, yung fiber sector. So we were made to attend uh, a lot of uh, negotiations abroad sa ano sa mostly sa uh, uh, Europe and the states no London Rome um, Geneva and ang maganda doon now looking back napakaganda na ang sikip ng per diem halos yung binibigay na allowance kasi government employees nga kami ang binibigay na allowance butch ano lang exacto lang sa ano so wala kang magagawa dun sa ano so kumisa pag may mga extra days na libre na realize ko na pag pumunta ka sa museum halos wala kang gagastusin yung mga kasama namin ako minsan yung mga delegado galing sa US or ano pag may 3 days break tatanong sila oh sa ka pupunta ay pupunta ako sa ano Brighton pupunta ako sa Geneva for uh, three days kasi na break yung conference namin eh. So talaga boy din sa sa painting. Oh, doon nagsimula kay Virgin Moreno at saka yung sa ano tapos sa interest na encourage niya pagkatapos nung wala ka nang magawa dahil wala kang funds eh. Pag pumunta ka sa museum, yung iba libre, yung iba 1 pound, 1 dollar, 2 dollars. Buong araw ka na doon. Ano, mga mangha ka na doon sa mga nakikita mo sa museum. So, uh, so after itong uh, fiber uh, authority days mo, sa araw nag-isip na pumasok sa uh, art business? Oo. Kasi one day, mga 1983 yun eh, um, naglalakad ako sa Makati. Na naligaw ako sa isang gallery sa may uh, Makati. Pumasok ako doon, maraming mga uh, senior citizens, elderly gentlemen, nagpipintura sila doon. Uh, yung isa, mahilig siya gumawa ng mga painting ng mga mga clowns na bali-bali ang leeg at mga nakakatakot na mga mga pangsabong na manok. Uh, so, ang ganda nito ah. Gusto kong gano'n. Gano. Si Ang Kyukok na pala yun. Tapos may isang mama na mahaba ang bigote niya. Mahilig siyang gumawa ng anatomy, no? Pala si Cesar Legaspi yeah. na yun. So, si Malang nandun, si Onib Olmedo nandun, Si Ben Cab, pag nasa Maynila siya, nandun, at, nandun, at saka si Sanso, pag nasa Maynila rin siya, nandun. So, sabi ko, wow, na, na, nalaglag ako, no, fortuitously, sa isang grupo na nandun pala silang lahat, top artist. Sige, uh, well, uh, ang lalaking pangalan ng mga binanggit mo kanina. You don't need it, you have a mic. And, uh, ngayon eh, marami pa tayong pag-uusapang mga pangalan tulad niyan. And, and those, among those names will soon rank our uh, guests for today. Kaya pag-uusapan natin ngayon kung paano ba nakakarating sa ganyang klaseng uh, burok ang isang, ang isang artist na nagsisimula sa, sa kolehiyo, sa lansangan. How do you get to be somebody like uh, an Ankyuko or, or a Malo uh, or, uh, or Cesar Legaspi? Well, my... my, my more particular question is uh, for a uh, new artist right now how easy or how difficult is it to break into the art scene mm. ano ba yung mga challenges na hinaharap ng isang bagong artist ngayon at unique ba yon sa kanilang generation pagkat ngayon there's so much information overload diba na you can in fact promote your art yourself you know through social media through through uh, information technology so yun ang gusto nating itanong uh, Paano ba nila nadiscover yung subject nila? Mm. Uh, narinig natin kanina from uh, Ma'am Kahipe na nadiscover niya yung identity. filipino is important and she discovered it early uh, in her life. What about uh, Juni and Kiri here? Na, na, discover, na meron po ba kayong subject na paulit-ulit yung binabalikan sa inyong sining at uh, paano nyo po na-discover yun? Tsaka isama mo na dyan, Juni. How does subject 
find its form. In other words, how do you know na ito, I need to make a sculpture out of this, or does form precede subject? Meron kang, meron kang kahoy dyan at iisipin mo na lang kung ano gagawin mo doon. Uh, at posible rin maraming subject, oh, <laughs> hindi lang what's, isa. What's the process? That's a lot of questions. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> alam mo naman what we mean. <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, I, I major in sculpture in oh. Italy. I'm, I'm quite good at it. But uh, along the way, uh, it was during activism years. Oh. And also, at the same time, it was the hippie years. So oh. I was a hippie. I smoked grass every day. So, oh. But at the same time, exposed to activism. Oh. So in fact, my earliest work are uh, before Adi Bayan and other friends that are doing uh, social realism. I was a social realist painter. Mm. So, but along the way, uh, maybe because I'm a provinciano and uh, I'm a sculptor, oh. so I trip ako doon sa installation. Oh. I really don't know that it was installation. I started installation late 60s while still in college. I have my first one-man shop installation outdoor uh, in UP Diliman, 1970. So I've been doing installation for the last 47 years. That's almost mm. practically my whole life as an artist. And uh, I think it's because I'm a nature boy. And at mm. the same time, and at the same time, I, I go for, as uh, uh, Mip said a while ago, uh, yung pagka-Pilipino mo. You know? So oh. I was involved with activism. Uh, so yung question during my, our time is, ano bang Philippine art? Oh. And I answered it very easily because during my time, Philippine art is Western art. No, kahit na kami gusto namin ipapakita ang kaluluwa ng pagka-Pilipino, there's so very few guides, oh. very few examples. But andoon yung adhikain, andoon yung passion. Oh. So in my case, being a nature boy, lumaki ako sa probinsya, we have a big farm, andoon yung Agusan River where I learned to swim at dog style. Chindra. So, involved ako or exposed ako. Ma malakit ako sa nature talaga. Oh. So, during the time, I was a working student. Hindi nga ako pinaparal ng parents ko. Uh, so, isa sa mga ginagawa ko ay, ay mamumulot ng mga, mga art material kasi wala akong pambili. Hmm. But during the time, for the first three years, I was a scholar ni Elvoy ba, uh, our national artist for hmm. sculpture. Three years akong nakatira sa kanila, I was treated as a son. So, exposed ako sa sculpture talaga. So, mm -hmm. advanced yung learning ko kay sa college. So, I got bored in college. But just the same, hindi ako content to dun sa sculpture. Eh. I was looking for something to express mm -hmm. my soul. Kaya yung first installation ko, ang team ko ay bayanihan. Mm -hmm. Because uh, even now, I always say that, look at your backyard. It's there. No? Mm -hmm. We have a lot of uh, things that Filipino. We have a rich culture before the Spanish came. Oh. So, yun ang binabalik-balikan ko. At dahil nga another element na hindi ako nakakabili ng material, namumulot na lang ako ng mga gamit-gamit. So because mm -hmm. sculptor naman ako, madali akong gumawa ng mga three-dimensional work. Mm -hmm. So nag-evolve ito, nahalo yung pagka-activist, nahalo yung pagka-hippie. Being hippie is nature lover, you know, na, na reinforce yung pagka-nature lover ko. So gawa ako ng gawa, hindi ko alam na installation yun. I don't know it was installation, so it was later ma after one decade na pinansin ako ng CCP na mm. at I, I think it was during Ray Albano's time it was a good uh -huh. oh, so, uh -huh. so siya yung nagkumpisa na oh installation installation so it's okay with me you can name it any, any, any name as long as I'm just doing my thing so yun nag evolve yun na ngayon accepted naman yung installation so I'm, I'm really happy for, for the development ng art now, as far as your other question, like, anong kaibahan ng panahon namin at panahon ngayon, basically it's the same, except that structurally, it's very different. Yeah. In our time, wala namang cell phone, nothing, and we cannot exhibit because during our time, kami ni MIPS, isang gallery lang ata, yung art gallery, so hindi ko tulad ngayon, no? wow, nagkalat yung gallery, so... Ang mga bata ngayon, walang problema. My nephew is graduating today, I mean, this year, fine arts. Nag-shishu na, nag-one man siya, nag-shishu pa nga sa CCP, you know? So, during our time, we don't have that. So, structurally, malaking kaibahan. Basically, it's the same. We be aktibo kami ngayon. Aktibo sila ngayon, especially because the auction is very strong, you know? Mm. And uh, there are a lot more colors, of course, a lot of buyers. So, yun ang, yun ang kasagutan, but basically, it's the same. It's the same. And after installation, nag-plat-plat to itong art, no? If you, if you study Philippine art, 
after ng 13 moderns, nagplato ito din ang Boy Bakim na inintroduce yung modern sculpture. Mm. No, nagbago na naman ng takbo and I was beneficiary doon kasi apprentice nga niya ako, the scholar. So after that, nagplato na naman. Then we have, we have installation, we have uh, conceptual art, so many things, uh, performance art. So nabubuhay na naman. But after this, for a while, nagpaplato na naman. Sa tingin ko lang. Mm. So what is active now is ceiling. Uh, maraming maraming kumikita mga kapatid. Sige, mamaya papasukan yeah, natin yung uh, uh, aspect na yan. Yeah. Oh. Oh. But I think when Kiri, if, when Kiri answers her question, she can also bring up that, that uh, her insights on the difference between the situation during her time and now. No? Uh, uh, how easy or, more or difficult is it for a new artist to break into this art scene now compared to uh, your time? But, but but also, her, she will answer the question oh, of the subject first. Yeah. No? How did you find your material? How did your material find you? Well, finding the material, uh, I don't think I had to go out of my way to find the material. It was mm -hmm. there, and uh, it was just a matter of looking at it differently. Mm -hmm. Meaning, I was, I was already, um, well, I, I really started um, not wanting to deal with people. Oh. But it was inevitable, oh. like uh, social problems. You oh. cannot. I felt that that's a. a were you were you antisocial in the beginning or yeah, misanthropic? Yeah, I, I was. I was very um, like my first organizations in UP Los Banos were like the UP Los Pansoy Society, where we have a garden. <laughs> uh, every morning we would. It was, I think, started by the son of Jebi Araos, in fact. Uh -huh. So we I come see. together. Yes. We yes. have a garden, oh. but then um, when there are two people. When there are rumbles, oh. um, the fraternity men would like destroy our garden. Oh. <laughs> and then Red Cross, so these are my, my organizations. Yes. And, but it, um, it became inevitable. I felt that you cannot disengage from what is happening in, in the oh. bigger context. So um, activism became also uh, important. And for me, because I was shy, the camera became my entry point. Mm -hmm. um, the camera became a way of entering this um, this realm oh. and speaking. It, it was an instrument that was helpful. But at that time, I wasn't thinking of okay, this is art. This is uh, this is going to be an artwork. I was or just if it's advocacy. Yes, I was just doing what I felt was necessary. Mm -hmm. But but what drew you to sculpture? And and in terms of to sculpture, visual arts? do you oh, the visual arts? She works yes. with multi. I, I work yeah. with a range, a range. of mediums yes, like yes. sculpture, photography, oh, mix. installation, mm -hmm. video. Uh, I think it was crucial that uh, in 2006 uh, there was an abduction of uh, an activist, Jonas Burgos. Oh, yes. Ah, yes. That's and, right. I remember him. And their family um, approached us and said, um, you know, how can we help as um, filmmakers? Mm -hmm. And at that time, um, I didn't have my own camera, and I couldn't shoot a video. So I decided to work on um, existing photographs. Mm -hmm. So I asked them, do you have, um, do you have uh, existing photographs of Jonas? And they invited me to their house, and I looked at their, their albums, albums, and yeah. I saw this photograph of Joe Burgos, the father of um, Jonas, who was the editor chief of we forum mm -hmm. and i just it was a photograph of the newly released uh, joe burgos he was released from being detained during marcos and he was embracing his son jonas and from there i decided to just delete the son from from, from the photograph picture, yeah. and created a video out of it and i think <laughs> no. it opened an idea about how you can work with existing um, material materials um, and create uh, something beyond that mm. um, so so that that was that was one I think seminar so work. The, but the, the social conscience in your work has been consistent no from mm. the beginning so it's a function I think of your education in Los Banos as well yes and my education and your, and your, your inside and, and outside of the classroom and the family background and everything and I was going to ask about that because the, yeah, you're kind of unique in the situation uh, both of your parents are, are artists. How does that both help and hinder you? Oh, it helps in the sense that you're already familiar 
with um, uh, with the scene in the sense of who are the artists, what are their works. But but I never because I never studied fine arts. I didn't look at it that at the historical mm -hmm. um, context yes. or see them as oh this so you is didn't have the formal training no? I didn't have no. the formal training in fact I saw them as uh, natural it's a natural circumstance and mm -hmm. uh, I would be surprised that um, young people would be odd of course I'm, mm -hmm. I'm odd with them but uh, I they're didn't, just mom and dad <laughs> yes and also other artists I didn't see artists as different from um, from educators, from other people who are pursuing other um, careers. Oh. It's, it's just natural. I, uh, and um, of course, I understood, but I only really understood it, of course, when I became part of the art scene. Oh. And, and then I, underst I understood how complicated but, so now, it can go. My question of how easy is it to break into the art scene during your time and what are mm. your thoughts on the art scene now and the challenges facing young artists now? Yes, uh, in my case, I didn't think that it was, there was no intention to break into anything. Uh, I felt that uh, I was comfortable wherever I was, just, just practicing. I didn't consider myself um, you didn't consciously strive to, to, yes. to be recognized? No, no. no. Uh, the impulse was not to be recognized or to, to gain awards or even to, to sell. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was a pure um, necessity. Like, I felt that... It was like breathing. Yes, it's, it's natural. And mm -hmm. um, all of these um, validation awards, they were very far from, from my, my mind. Oh, dito naman ke. Yes, yes, sure, sure. Yes. Yes, Can I just add to that? Because maganda yung point na ni Ray's ni ni Junior at ni Kiri, no? And uh, Neil's questioning, because uh, um, I think there are three components eh, in in the art scene. The first is the cultural side, the second is the economics side of it, and the business side, and the third is the artist himself, no? So I. And the creative side, no? so the three of them. And ngayon, now, Neil, there is a convergence of all three factors, no? Ma because the the economic side is doing very well, no? Unlike in the 80s, where the economy had stagnated, uh, thanks to martial law, right? Uh, but now, because the economy is going well, it's uh, we're next to China in the entire world. Ang, ang ganda ng economic growth natin. Ilang is it, is na yan. it translating into a growth in the art market? That's yes, the question. Because Neil, ganito yan eh. The economy is unprecedentedly growing. Uh, and second, uh, you will see that there's a real estate boom. Be because art has to go somewhere. There, I, I, there, there are four places where art goes to. One is to the, to the, uh, to the museums. Great art, right? And the second is uh, to mga bahay kasi art will have to be hung in offices or in houses in rooms living rooms the third is in the artist's studio if nobody wants to buy it right uh, and, and the fourth is in of course you know uh, sad to say they're really really bad art no? so walang pupuntahan talaga yun but anyway dun sa ano dun sa ngayon nangyayari Juni ano ang ganda kasi uh, in even young artists today can be full-time artists. Nung araw, nung time natin, 60s, 70s, the artists had to be, ano, di ba? Uh, they had to be teachers, professors in, in the university. They, they, most of them went to advertising. Uh, um, Olaso and Legaspi. HR was in the newspapers. Uh, Malang was in... Uh, the cartoons, the ba, illustrationists, um, Parial and Angelito Antonio were faculty members. You know? So, so hindi ka pwede mabuhay as a full-time artist noon. Uh, Kokonti lang sila, no? Maybe your dad was one of them, talagang pure artist, no? Um, but but um, ngayon, um, many of them survive with their art. They don't have to yes. have uh, Jack, let's, let's just hold it there for a minute because I really want to explore that 
I really want to explore that, 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 that part of the art scene now. But before we go there, let me just go back a bit to, to MIPS. You know? Because she comes from, from that generation, and, uh, late 60s, early 70s. You know, na, uh, kayong, kayong, yung generation ninyo, nakapag-aral pa kayo under the, the masters uh, or people who would become masters. Sina, sina Hoya, Sina Chapet, and so on. So how did you find your own, parang your own, your own voice as an, as an artist uh, under the shadow of these luminaries? Yeah, I, my teachers were Hoya, Constancio Bernardo, uh, Rod Perez, Abueva. I was happy under their shadows. Pero may ibang questions. Nagpapasalamat ako, I've been uh, under them. Uh, but uh, looking back, yung landas ko medyo mahaba na eh. Importante sa akin yung, as I mentioned before, finding the identity. Kasi wala noon eh. Pa marami hindi binigay yung UP education ko at that time, I thought. I didn't know printmaking. I didn't know the image of the Filipino. Siguro hinahanap pa rin natin hanggang ngayon. So, looking back nga, uh, consciously, I had to search for what is Filipino by working as a researcher at the National Library and writing for cultural publications. Nasa National Library, yung paghapo naman, nasa PAP ako. Uh, Ophelia Helveson Tiki was there. She's my, practically my mentor sa, sa Jorge Bocobo, kaya morning, afternoon, buong araw na yon Side by side. Kaya parang natural din na naghanap ako nung mga boxer codex, hindi pa naman nakikita yun nung araw. Saka yung mga prints nung araw, of course, nakita ko yung Keben Cab later, mas madali sa kanya, being in London, ang daming tinatapo na mga, mga lumang lithographs. Uh, Na-inspire din ako doon sa mga gawa ni Ben. Paano mo napili yung printmaking bilang pangunahing medium mo? Uh, kasi ano yun, nagandahan ako sa silk screen, sa UP, silk screen lang yung ginagawa namin. E eh, napaka-commercial. Of course, uh, com advertising yung kinuha ko, pero masyado kong hiniwalay. Magdo-drawing ako para sa illustration ng Popcom. Pero pag dumating sa painting ko, huwag nyo nang pakialaman yun. Ako lang yun, yun yung aking ano, uh, natural na poetry. Ganon. Anyway, uh, tinataha ko yung uh, where do my themes come from. No? Yun nga yung identity at yung history. Nauna, pero ang criticism nun, parang very impersonal naman yung gawa mo, yung mga ninuno. Okay lang, basta nag-enjoy akong gumawa ng no? iba-ibang kulay. Yung uh, pangalawa kong ano, face, looking back, uh, nasa bahay lang ako eh. Parang lumabas yung mga problema ko being babae. Na-combine yung ano bang identity mo being woman. Eh kasi nakakulong ako sa bahay, nag-aalaga uh, ng anak at ng asawa. Natural din, yung mga gamit ko sa bahay, yun yung ginagawa kong art. Uh, tapos na-label akong feminist before I even knew what was feminism kasi hinihingan ako ng mga artist talk about ano, uh, kung anong gawa. So naging feminist na nga ako muna bago ko pinag-aralan kung ano ba yung feminism. Nagtayo ko ng, uh, isa ka suma nagtayo ng grupong Kasibulan. Oo, Kasibulan. Oo. Yung pala nga kasi, uh, pare-pareho kami whether single, may asawa, o ano eh, we felt uh, subjugated yung babae sa art scene, kami yung organizers sa mga big organizations. Pero ang aming pinopromote, yung mga kalalakihan. Yung aming trabaho, kami sekretary, taga-sulat, taga-layout, taga taga-promote, taga gano'n. Habang, teka muna, gawin na nga kaya natin tayo-tayo muna. Uh, naghahanap kami ng simbolo, yun yung kasibulan na simbolo bilang babae, na distinct, at saka uh, i-promote yung mga nakabatay din sa uh, gawain ng kababaihan sa Pilipinas. Gano'ng ka-importante itong mga artist groups, <laughs> itong mga barkadahan ng mga artists uh, sa pag-usubong ng arts dito sa Pilipinas? Uh, Membro ka ba dyan yun ng isang, isang grupo o talagang loner ka lang uh, dyan sa Los Banos? But, but there are these there are these groups in the back. Uh, maybe maybe uh, Saturday, Saturday. or rather uh, an important sort of uh, related question is are you are you keeping tabs on the practices of other artists and are you do you consider any other artists as a rival or a source of influence or inspiration in other words do you are you aware of uh, I am, I am, I am aware, but I, 
similar practices. I made it a, a big concern. I just do my thing. I, I isolated myself in Los Banos. Accidentally or ironically, I was with Goeba for three years. But I'm the only apprentice of me that has never been influenced by him. Ibang iba talaga yung trabaho ko sa trabaho niya. So magkalayo kami, hindi ka tulad ni Rutsa, ni Bautista na dumaan sa kanya, na kukuha yung estilo niya. But what influenced me from Didi is that it's the mind. Kasi ang super safe pag itong tao nito ay super safe pag tapos at the same time, makulit yung buro niya. In fact, if you think about indigenous material for contemporary art making, I saw it first in the building. Mawa siya nung Moses na nakalutang. He was using kawayan. The only difference between me and him is that wala siyang body of work. Kasi siya, minsan, makulit siya eh. Nakakita siya ng coral gagawin niya. But yung body of work talaga niya, masyado na nga yun. So yun siguro ang naka-influence sa akin. Otherwise, nothing. So, Panahon naman ngayon, na wala na siya malayo sa akin. Uh, wala namang nag-influence sa akin. If you, if you are aware of my work, uh, you can see na hindi mo matritress kahit sinong artist. Uh, I, mean, I can see that very frankly. Uh, hindi mo matritress sa foreign artist or sa local artist. It's basically my, my own work. So, uh, in fact, I don't read art book. Uh, I, I read uh, science book, but not art book. So, mm. It's still down na yung may nakakita ko sa libro. Maybe because I'm not interested or I don't want to be influenced. Kasi nung sa college kami, araw-araw, tinitignan mo yung mga libro yan. So saturated yung mind ko. Pero kung rin nga yung maps, naghanap ako ng ibang expression. Sino ba ako? Pilipino ako eh. So bakit ba wala tayong expression na galing sa kaluluwa ng mas Pinoy? So tragically, wala talaga nung panahon na Western. Even now, it's Western. So, but then we have names like it, we have theory. So, ito yung mga tao na nang bubuting-ting talaga na ano ba tayo, sino ba tayo? So, yun ang nilakbay ko talaga sa pagka-artist ko, sa installation. We can ask Kiri the same question. Do you keep tabs on the practices of your contemporaries? Um, yes, only because I am interested in the work that other people are, yes. other artists are producing. And in my case, I don't limit myself to visual artists because uh. I like to <laughs> read um, Filipino writers, performance artists, mm -hmm. theater, dancers, musicians. Um, and I, I, I have this expansive um, interest in, in the various uh, fields of art and it's not to keep tabs mm -hmm. or because of rivalry but purely um, curiosity and interest and, general and interest, yeah. I'm certain that it also influences my work mm -hmm. whether consciously yeah. or not uh, but of course the, the time I can be very social in terms of Okay, organizing, watching, and just absorbing um, what is being produced in the Philippine art scene. But the time comes when you really have to fight and struggle for your own time and space and mm -hmm. isolate to, to make your own work. And a lot so of it's a kind of metronomic or pendular movement between like social life and then isolation. Yes, and uh, many times it's the isolation or the time that you have for yourself and the art that you have to, to really fight for. Yeah. Because I do understand what, what uh, Meps was saying about the tendency of women artists to, okay, if there's a lack, or, for example, we take on that, that lack. We take on roles which are not necessarily creative. Um, and uh, because I guess we have that natural tendency to, to really, uh, forgive me for saying this, but be self-sacrificing. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and there is that line where you are already giving up things that you could do yourself as an artist. And it's always a struggle, I think, because there's a lot of merit in organizing and helping also other artists. But the line comes when you feel that but I also have something to say from yes. what I have seen, and that's where you have to mm. fight for it. 
um, I'm sure it's even harder for women artists who have families mm -hmm. yeah. and there. But, but, the, but the other side of, of struggle is, is recognition and reward. So I'd like also yeah, to ask, we can about, ask that question. about that, that aspect of Institutional of, of validation. How mm -hmm. important is it uh, to receive an award? Uh, because, you know, maybe another related question has to do with what Jack brought up regarding yes. the, the commercial mm -hmm. and the economic side of art. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that applies to object art, that, the art that can be bought and collected. But what about installation art? What about community art, the art that's not meant to be sold? And I think that's where the heart of at least Kiri and Juni saying basically they do what they want and they don't think about whether it's going to be sold or not. Right? Let's, get the ground, let's get the follow their passion. Is that division level. is that division sharp? Is that division <laughs> should that division be maintained? Yeah. Neil, can I just tie it up now? Because yes. um, I what I wanted to go to the point that uh, now um, uh, Junior was saying that uh, in the past there was a wave, no, that mm. art had gone up during mm. after the thirteen moderns, oh. and then it reached a plateau, mm. and now it's gone up again. No? Oh. So. I think that's also because that many artists, young artists and even the senior artists, have a lot of things to say. You know? they're, they're, their creative juices are really coming out and, and overflowing. So that on the cultural aspect, there is now a, 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 an upswing. And then, tumugma pa don Butch, yung economic upswing. Oh. No? So, and, so Yung, yung sa cultural field, may, may maraming magandang sinasabi yung young contemporary artists. Tapos, pati yung mga modernists, parang naano din sila, nainganyo din sila. So, they, they've also saying, they're also saying um, very interesting things no? with, with their own voices. So, tumugma ngayon yung nangyayari sa cultural side at saka tumugma yung nangyayari sa economic side. So, now it's really a great time to be an artist in the Philippines. Pero, no? pero totoo bang maraming mga batang artists natin ngayon ay eh, mas market conscious din at nagpro-produce ng trabaho para sa market kasi nakikita nila. Yes, uh, uh, actually, kung kumisan, yun nga yung nakakahinayang, ano? oh. kasi yung point ni Neil, di ba? Kasi paano naman yung mga hindi yung commercial yung yung end point oh. nila? Kasi may no? ano rin yun, may the question of integrity and compromise, di ba? Yes. So, uh, kung artist ka uh, at pinuproduce mo ay, are mark, is market driven or may concern for, you know, for commercial viability. Pero, pero isettle natin yung basic question niya. Masama ba yan? Masama ba ang gumawa ng trabaho <laughs> para, para ibenta? Gusto ko nga itanong, kaya I brought it is, up. Is that, eh. is that a bad thing? Um, you steps, ma anong tingin mo? Hindi naman masama gumawa ng art to make a living. Oh. We respect that. Kailangan yun. No? Oh. Uh, Pero kanya-kanya tayo ng motivation eh, and oh. we should respect that. Like me, oh. kailangan ko rin mabuhay, pero pag gumagawa ako ng, siguro may commissioned work, oh. yun, for kabuhayan, pero oh. hindi ko pa rin, yeah, ano yung, pipiliin ko rin yes. yung pinapagawa sa akin. Yes. Nasang ayon, dun sa gusto kong gawin. Oh. Na, nakikipag-usap ako sa kanya kung anong gusto niya, at yung, dapat mapangibabaw din yung integrity ko. Oh. Yun ang ano ko sa... Uh, pagpipinta para mabuhay. Oh. Kasi ako rin, simple lang eh. Basta makabili lang ako makakain. <laughs> Hindi oh. ako masyadong uh, uh, mapaghanap ng returns. Gusto ko kasi oh. yung magagawa ko, yung gusto kong gawin. Uh, is, is, is there a line you draw between work that you do for selling and work that you do for yourself? Hmm. My advice is always the same. Two. Hmm. One is never think na art making is a Okay. Like That's his position. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Oh. But if you are good, you keep on it. Mm. You will be noticed. Maybe, maybe we even get rich with your work. Oh. But it's not a hanap If you want to to uh, sustain your art work, mm. to support your art making, work some something else. It may have a day job. job. You know. Mm. Or, to, to, Mm. There are many things that you can do to support your art. Oh. But never do the, the thing that uh, an art movie is mismo ang gagawin mong negosyo. Uh -huh. Bakit po hindi it's, pwede? Never, it's never negosyo po. Mm. But if you are really good at it, you insist and keep persistent about it, then 
Maybe he will recognize. And he can mm -hmm. go on the and he can run on the or, you know. But you have to support your art because if you will not support your art, the tendency is that you're using the art itself as a kind of art. Okay. And it should be very well, What's your take on that? Uh, Kiri, what's Kiri. your take on that? Well, um, well, first, I, I don't subscribe to the uh, idea that it's good to be an artist now because there's also an economic up, upswing mm -hmm. or there are a lot of gallery spaces now. I mean, I think it's complete, the idea of being an artist should be completely independent from that. Mm -hmm. um, we have romantics here. <laughs> uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, perhaps we have different um, ideas about it. I just feel that even if um, there is no economic opportunity, yeah. if you have to produce your artwork um, or your art, then you have to, it's a matter of life or death, or you just have to produce it. And if you have to, um, I believe in the fluidity and spontaneity of the concept of art. If you think you're a sculptor, but um, it's impossible to create a sculpture mm -hmm. because of circumstances, perhaps you'll transform into another kind of artist using a different medium. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, that's part of the creativity uh, or the, um, you know, the, the magic perhaps of, um, of art. And I also think that so, okay. If you don't, if you don't necessarily have to, uh, you don't, uh, ad, uh, you, you don't advise young artists to produce art commercially or with that in mind. Maybe uh, the uh, the fallback is at least you might get some institutional validation. Uh, and is that a good enough exchange? Well, first, it's already um, tragic if you're producing art because of uh, commercial. Mm -hmm. Uh, viability and because of validation because um, validation has its merits in the sense that uh, I remember that um, going to uh, places outside of Manila uh, they immediately define you as artists if you have an award yeah, okay. so it's sort of an easy like a CCP uh, award or it's, a plat yes, no. it's a platform that we can really uh, maximize yes. to, to push some forms of art or some yes. sectors of artists. Um, validations or, or awards can be um, symbolic. For example, it's true that I don't care about um, awards or validation, but sometimes you can use it as a woman artist to push for the, the, this advocacy of putting women, at the, women artists mm -hmm. at the forefront mm -hmm. or a kind of um, yes. artwork at the forefront if installation is not popular if painting is what is popular and you get validation for another mm -hmm. kind of work then it sort of um, you just use it complicates yeah. makes complex the the scene which is good i think um well am i answering the question yes you are <laughs> yes. but but we're, we're close to wrapping up so let me just no. ask you uh, by, by way of, of summing up your your uh, the, the way you look at uh, philippine art today where are we headed where is Philippine art yeah. going? Saan tayo patungo? Sa, sa What's the state of Philippine art oh. and where should it go? Can I just say something <laughs> about ano? Kasi interestingly, you, I agree with what Juni and Kiri are saying. No? That uh, for an artist to succeed, they have to put their heart and soul into their art. They have to love what they're doing. No? Um, Anybody, any artist who is trying to do their art for commercial success or for validation, um, sometimes they fail because they, they sort of uh, adjust too much to the market and they're not um, sincere in what they're doing. No? So, unbelievably, I, I'm on the same side as you are, that most of the artists that we ourselves in our gallery carry are the artists that are true to themselves, you know. Um, ang art kasi and money are, are funny. Eh? It's like water. The more you try to grip it and grab it, the more it will flow off, you know. So the artists who have become very successful, um, we always mention Ang Kyukok, never really thought of commercialization from the very beginning. 
uh, in the 60s, nobody bought his art. Pero Olive kung wala, kung wala Olmedo, in the 70s. Pero totoo din yan. Hmm. Di ba? Maganda nga yung point na yun. So, ang point ko lang kanina is that if survival is the issue, many artists are surviving today because of the economic situation. No? Uh, so, nangyayari ngayon, uh, even though there are thousands of artists, because there are maybe a hundred galleries, there are, they are able to survive. And if they survive, they can do greater art. Diba? Kasi may hirap gumawa ng magandang art kung wala kang makain. Eh, diba? So, yung iba, pagka meron ng mga patrons, mas nakakagawa sila ng mas magandang art. It also creates, I think, a micro-economy of uh, you know, people related to the business. Hindi lang artists mismo, kundi yung mga assistants, mga... Pero maybe we bring up the idea of value, oh. right? Which is what makes a, art, a particular artwork valuable. And that's where institutional validation comes in and the gatekeeping function of uh, institutions like UP yes. and CCP come yes. in. Yes. Once you have an artist that's, uh, who has received recognition, then more or less, may value na yung work niya. Mm -hmm. no? So that, that's, that plays uh, into the same circuit. Assuming the validation process is above board. Huh? Well, yes, but the, yes, yes. Of course, we also have that problem. Yeah. Yeah. We also uh, have that problem. Of, yan, eh. I think local art criticism is not mature mm. or developed enough, and that is why one critic's uh, pronouncement can easily be refuted by another one. And you can hardly have a consensus, right? But I'm thinking that uh, distinguishing validation from commercial consideration, because in fact, mas maganda na for me yung validation sometimes eh. Kasi yeah. hindi, it doesn't necessarily mean commercial success. Oh. Right? Like if you are, let's say... But some it sets of, it up. Yeah, but some of our art, art critics in UP are validating or recognizing the work of installation and community artists mm -hmm. whose artworks cannot be sold. I mean, who would like to, you know, how, how do you put a, an installation piece as large as this room into your living room? You can't, right? At saka yung installation kasi, Neil, um, although many people really like it, the, is it correct to call it ephemeral? I mean, hindi mo there kasi... There is that ephemeral oh, aspect okay. to it, yes. So, it's situational siyang... art. You cannot recreate a situation anymore. Oh, right? mahirap siyang dalhin sa ibang lugar oh. or mahirap siyang itago for a long time. Yes. So, probably that's the only reason why installation art doesn't have the same, um, parang, not that many people collect it. Kasi mahirap itago eh. May, mahirap ilipat. Once na nilipat mo yung installation, iba na eh. Hindi ba? Kaya, uh, 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 may value naman kasi oh. yun, diba? Uh. Sige, <laughs> uh, The only reason why uh, few people are buying or people are not buying installation art because they are ignorant about it. Uh, you can actually buy installation art. Installation artist now is earning, unlike during my time, because uh, a big, for example, a big hotel, they hired an artist to put a permanent installation in the lobby. Uh, uh, we used to have uh, installation artists doing yung window, ano ba yun? Yung displays, window dis displays. Window display oh. Before, talagang ordinary. But now, artists are, installation artists are being hired to do this thing. I've been hired by Sunny for, for Corporation, for example, to, to put an installation in their showroom. Mm -hmm. So, the only reason why, because people always think that installation is ephemeral. That is true. Uh, installation is ephemeral because wala nga bibili. Saka ang hirap is to lalo na kung malaki. Like me, I do more than one hectare big installation. Sinong, saan mo itago yun? So, <laughs> hindi mo maitago yun. But, there are many ways an installation can be purchased. Like now, I have been hired by a very rich guy, may bagong bahay, magawa ng installation na maliit lang sa bahay niya. That's installation, and that's permanent. In fact, I also inaugurated my first permanent installation in the country sa parts, uh, Ninoy Aquino Parks and Wildlife. I have it there. It's have have you considered, boy, if it's a very big installation, uh, documenting it through video? Yes. And, and then you can, selling the video? Mm, and like Cristo, for example, I think everybody Cristo. knows about Cristo. Yeah. Uh, Cristo earned not from the installation itself, but by the drawing, the, the recording, yes. the concept paper, yeah. everything. So, installation artists can earn right now, especially because the structure supporting art making but is... But what about community art, where basically the artist just provides a bit of the canvas and then the rest of the community just fill it in? And then that whole thing is collaborative rather than... Uh, 
assign to any one artist. Well, that's good also because that's a community work. You I, cannot buy that. You, yeah, you cannot buy that. But uh, as I've said, installation nga ephemeral karamihan, ephemeral. But we have come to the point na insti installation artists can earn from their work. No? Mm -hmm. So, malapad na yung dinat na ni, malayo na yung inabot ng installation artist, hindi yung katulad ng uno na ephemeral lahat. No? Ngayon hindi na eh. If you're a rich guy, you can hire installation artists do an installation work in, in my garden. You know, it will be permanent, hindi lang yung sculpture. Kata, karamihan kasi sculpture. Yes. Do you think that more education lang? Yes, yes. And maybe you can play a big part of it because you have publication. If you have a lot of publication about installation art, it, it will be just like painting or sculpture. You know, ex except that, maliliit. Generally, maliliit. The collectible, sorry. Uh, pero halimbawa, you're a rich man, meron kang, tingnan mo yung mga ginagawa sa mga probinsya, meron silang way of the cross, ang lalaki nun. You can do installation as big as that. You know? So, there's no limit. It's except na, except na re relatively, bago lang ang installation, lalo na sa country natin. But it's there. The market is there. Maybe you can play a big part about it. It's a very optimistic way of looking at oh, it. Oh, si Beb's yeah. naman. Masaya ako na we will pass that uh, age na libre ang art. Art is mm. very good. Pamili kayo mo. Salamat at wala na tayo doon sa mentality na art ay libre at pinamimigay lamang. Although nangyayari pa rin ngayon, uh, at saka mabuti rin na uh, pwede nang mabuhay sa installation. Pero ang aking kinakabahan ay yung mga kabataan ngayon na nai-spoil by the art fairs and the auctions and everyday full-time art. Mabuti na bubuhay sila. Pero precarious position yon kasi we have seen even the past uh, artist na nauna pa sa atin, pag nabenda na yung trabaho nila, ulit na lang ng ulit, anong mm -hmm. impact niyan sa kultura at sa iyong kaluluwa yeah. at yung pinaaabot mo sa ating komunidad. Hindi ba kailangan eh, uh, wag naman masyadong busog kasi pag mabusog ka, maimpacho ka. <laughs> Baka Sama hindi ka yung, na may, may konting gutom pa rin mer Oo, merong ano yung konting gutom at challenge, uh -huh. umiigting eh, yung uh -huh. iyong art pag may challenge. So siguro, uh, since, since patapos na tayo, uh, and I'll ask this of everybody, what, what's the way forward? Paano susulong pa ang, ang Philippine art? Siguro yung bawat artist, bawat creative person, mag-focus ka sa iyong creativity, anong nasa loob mo. Mm. Everything else will follow. Okay. Tsaka pagbutihin mo araw-araw mm. yung ginagawa mo. Okay, salamat. Jack. Sa akin, Butch, kailangan talagang ano, eh, yung mga artist. Agree ako kay Maps na dapat they look inside themselves and they have to always try to express that sincerely and always look for new ways eh. oh. kasi pag nagawa na dati magfe-fail na yung artist eh. oh. I mean yung nagawa ng ibang artist ha? so dapat may bago silang sinasabi at sincero yung sinasabi nila so, at lastly gusto ko lang sabihin oh. Butch na wake up call yung sinasabi ni Junie sa amin kasi nasa publications oh. kami so we will take that upon advisement na we have to feature more of installation art okay. to help in the education process. Okay, salamat. Yeah. Uh, Kiri. Kiri. In my case, I, I still think that uh, maybe there are really works which are not necessarily meant to be bought or mm -hmm. to be kept. So, uh, like kanina in question about community art, like oh. how do we sell it? But then, perhaps the idea is hindi naman talaga siya to sell and we just have to find a way to help the artists to produce it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, parang and I think it's healthy if there is still a kind of art that, that cannot be reduced, cannot be monetizable. Yeah. Right? Yes. And that keeps art, the idea of art alive. Because if, um, if we package it in a way that, okay, a work, uh, we have to reform the the consciousness of the people that anything can be bought even community yeah, art i think it's either. it's a good idea i think the idea is more of how do we help to sustain the production of works yes. which are really not sellable but are should be made mm -hmm. and are important to be made okay. uh, so we have to change the idea that we produce works to be sold okay uh, consumed we just, by the market yes um this is where perhaps uh, how do we get um, because a lot of community work or installation they're always like one time big time right mm -hmm. so how do we make make this practice sustainable yes. uh, perhaps pasta uh, merong my, my grant merong merong financial support yeah. for the artists um, not necessarily 
that you earn a lot, but yes. enough to be sustainable. Because a lot of artists are content with that, just to yeah. be able to live decently. Okay. And um, what is the question is how yes, what is the direction? Yeah, what's the way yeah. forward? Yes. A way forward. Sometimes it's good to know. Uh, n it's good not to know mm -hmm. where we're going. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think that's a way of also um, making keeping art um, fresh yes. and and new all the time is when we do not know what to expect. Okay. Uh, once you have this formula, then that's already part of uh, history it's or art. it's the yeah. end of it. So uh, it's good not to know what to expect, uh, but just to just to keep at do it. your thing, but at the same time um, keeping one eye open or because be I, open, yeah. yes, be open. Because I also think that um, while we do need the isolation, it's also not human to keep ourselves um, closed from the rest of society. All right, um, uh, Juni. I agree with Kerry, like you know, not being just yourself. Because in my case, I, I do uh, community work every year. In fact, uh, last year I was adopted by Lilio Town mm -hmm. as an uh, honorary citizen because mm -hmm. every year I go there, I yes. teach their young artists. We have collaborative work. Also in Kalamba, mm -hmm. every year I do community work for Kalamba. And that is very important. But basically, where we are going depends on the artists. Mm -hmm. So, artists talaga yon. So, I remember kanina minention ko yung first advice ko sa mga artists na hindi, hindi basically, I mean, fundamentally hindi hanap buhay ang art making at ang sikan kong advice sa kanila ay don't be afraid to do your thing you know kung ayun ang gusto mo gawin mo men needs needs know that you know that you know otherwise kung hindi ka matapang nagagawin yung gusto mo nang inihintay mo lang na mabibinta ba ito or tatanggapin ba ito ng community magustuhan ba ito ng community i think uh, medyo malabo so hindi natin alam kung anong pupuntahan itong art natin ngayon no Pero ang importante ay nasa artist yun. If all, all the artists, kas, tulad ng sinabi ni Mips, ay maging sincere sa kanilang ginagawa at gagawa everyday, ganun ang outlook. I think may mapupuntahan talaga tayo. So, it's depend on the artist. So, don't be afraid to do your thing, you know. So, there you yeah. go. Best well, piece we, of advice. We've had a very interesting and provocative <laughs> exchange with our guests today and I'd like to thank them. Uh, for the time and their contributions. Maraming salamat po sa ating salamat. kasamang yung araw. Uh, si, si Jun Yi, si uh, Kiri Delena, uh, si Meps uh, Kahipe Andaya, and uh, si Jack uh, Tutiko. Maraming salamat po at hanggang sa susunod na kabanata ng kultura, sining at iba pa dito sa TVUP. <laughs>